So in this video, we're gonna go through some of the big rocks for squatting and try to cover the main areas for improvement we see with people so you can implement those into your training. So once we've gone through those, we're gonna have a bit of chat, a bit of a chat about the program, some of the exercises we've selected and how they're gonna be important for us to achieve those big rocks. So the first big rock we're gonna run through is bracing. Now, I think bracing with squatting is something that people know about and think's important, but it's often poorly executed and not executed how we, we want it to be. So the biggest thing that people get wrong when they try to brace is they think about bracing being taking in as much air as possible. And Often what happens when a massive breath of air is taken in and we just think about getting in as much air as possible is we don't put our midsection in the position we'd like it to be in. So for us to create a strong brace, what we're trying to do is close off that space between our rib cage and our pelvis. If we take a massive breath in, what we often find is our rib cage is a little bit too elevated and our chest is a bit too high. So we might feel tight, but we're not really creating as much rigidity as we can. So the steps are gonna to follow to create a brace is not gonna start with a breath in, but actually with a breath out. By taking a bit of a, an exhale and understanding how we can use a bit of an exhale to keep our ribs down and our hips tucked underneath, we're gonna get a stronger brace. So once we can use that exhale to find the stacked position we're looking for, we're then gonna take a bit of a breath in to reinforce that position. The goal though is to first keep our ribs down. The breath in is only the second step. The breath in reinforces that stack, but the stack is what's gonna be most important. A drill we love to use to teach this is the anterior loaded goblet squat. It's a light exercise and it's something we can use in warm up sets, but it's just a chance to get us feeling what pulling our ribs down and getting our hips underneath us feels like. So we'll take a light weight, probably 2.5 kilos or five kilos. It doesn't really matter, something pretty light. Elevate our heels. And what we're gonna do is reach that plate right out in front of us, as far out in front of us as we can. As we do that, we should naturally feel that our ribs wanna come down. We can add that exhale in to, to better achieve that. And then once we've found that position where we feel like we've got our ribs stacked down and our hips tucked underneath, we're gonna squat down. And our goal is to maintain that position. If we find throughout the course of the descent, we lose it, we're probably going too fast or we're not reaching that plate out enough in front. So we're gonna go really slow with this movement and take our time with it. The goal is not to have maximal output, it's just to be a slow movement to feel the sensations we're looking for when building a good brace. Once we have achieved this and once we get a feeling for what it feels like to have our ribs down and hips tucked underneath, we're gonna then try to apply that to our regular squat. We're probably not gonna expect to get this right straight away. It might take a little bit of time to get used to, but continuing to use the anterior loaded goblet squat in our warm up sets is going to help us. So initially when we are learning to brace well, it might feel like a bit of a tedious process and that we're thinking a lot and there's a lot of breathing involved. Initially it might feel like that, but the goal over time is for it to be a seamless process. On top of that, the goal over time is to match the bracing and the breathing to the weight on the bar. So in time, we want it to be that light weights require minimal bracing and minimal breathing, but the heavier those weights get, we wanna be more active with our bracing and our breathing. In the learning phases, however, it can be useful to kind of reposition ourselves almost every rep just to make sure we're in the right spot, but that's not the goal forever. The goal forever is to only really think heaps about bracing really hard and, and holding our breath in for every rep at heavier weights. That's not something we're gonna need for higher rep sets or, or warm up sets. The key um, with bracing is not just to set it at the top but to maintain it throughout the duration of the rep. On the program, we have the tempo squat and the tempo squat is a great chance to practice this. So we're not just bracing at the top and then losing that brace as soon as we descend. That slower descent gives us time to coordinate ourselves and maintain a rigid position throughout the duration of the squat. Whenever we're making technique changes in the gym, the warm-ups are a great place to practice so we can really pay attention to our positioning on our warm-ups, but also move slowly. Right now, we might have to take a little bit weight off, the, weight off the bar to get things right, but we're better off slowing things down to find the new positions versus trying to move as fast as possible and then just reverting back to our old technique. After having an idea of how we want our bracing to be, our second big rock is going to be tension. Now, creating the brace and creating a strong brace is gonna create a lot of tension throughout our system, but the second place we're gonna look for tension is through the upper body and specifically the upper back. The bar is obviously on our back and particularly with a low bar squat, keeping that bar in a nice rigid 
position on our back is gonna be really important for a smooth transition of force. If that bar is moving around and isn't rigidly held there, we're not gonna be able to apply all that force from our legs up into the bar as efficiently. So the, the main key here is that we're pulling the bar down into our back and also pulling our elbows together to hold a nice rigid position. Just like with bracing, this is something we wanna practice on our warm-up sets. We don't wanna just haphazardly move through the warm-up sets and only try this on heavier sets. The warm-up sets are going to be a chance to practice this. The tempo squat, once again, is going to be a good variation to practice this because if we have a bit of a slower descent, it gives us more time to feel that position. And if we don't do it right, we have more time to be aware of what we're doing and then we can then make an adjustment from rep to rep. Versus if we just speed through the reps, we're probably not gonna make any technical adjustments. We're just going to stick to what we've always been doing. Similar to bracing, the key is to not just set a strong upper back position at the top of the rep, but to maintain it throughout the entire rep and then from set to set. So our brace and our upper back tension can be reset between reps. The goal should be to just to maintain it pretty much consistently across the whole set. But if we do lose it between rep to rep, that's okay. We can always reset at the top and that's where slowing things down makes it a bit easier for us. Once we have upper back tension and bracing and down pat, the third big rock we're gonna run through is midfoot pressure. So if we can maintain an even weight distribution when we're squatting, it's just gonna feel a lot more smooth. If the movement's feeling more smooth, we're gonna feel more strong and we're gonna feel more confident. Often what happens is people throughout the duration of their squat will either fall forward onto their toes or have too much weight back on their heels. Instead, we wanna have that weight evenly distributed across the whole foot. Not too much in the heels and not too much in the toes. So if you see that you're falling forwards, chances are too much of your weight is on your toes and you need to adjust back slightly. And if too much weight is in your heels, you need to adjust forward slightly. The anterior loaded goblet squat or just a body weight squat um, before we get into heavier squats is a great, great chance to practice this. And and we can start to be aware of where the pressure in our feet is. And pretty quickly, you should be able to feel if you're too much in your heels, too much in your toes, or if you are evenly distributing that weight across the entire foot. Where people sometimes go wrong with this is they think they're trying to hunt a vertical bar path. This is not necessarily the case. As enough weight is on the bar, we probably will start to see a vertical bar path, but when we're squatting around our body weight or maybe less than our body weight, we aren't gonna see a, a vertical bar path most likely. So don't stress too much about the path of the bar, more so worry about where you feel the pressure in your feet. And if you can feel and visually see that you're staying balanced over your midfoot, we're where we wanna be. Just like with the other two big rocks, slowing the movement down is gonna be the best way to implement midfoot pressure. If you rush through your reps and you don't, and you're not good at maintaining balance, it's unlikely that you're gonna improve your balance. So slow the movement down, use the tempo squat as a chance to practice this, as well as your warm-up sets. Taking the warm-ups a little bit slower initially is a chance to ingrain that new technique that we're looking for. Hopefully the video was helpful guys. Get stuck into the program, take some of that advice on board. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me a DM. I'm happy to answer questions. Happy for you to send me some videos through to get a bit of technique feedback. Whatever help you need, I'm here to help. So please be in contact and let me know how the program goes.